Welcome to Inspired Insider. Some things to listen up for in this interview with Abel is how he talks about how he built a six-figure online business in his first year. Also, find out what the therapist told him after his first visit. Watch until the end as well when he decides not to answer my last question and why. Much more coming up now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Abel. Abel is the creator of pod, the podcast Fat Burning Man that's reached number one in health in multiple countries across the world, beating out behemoths like Jillian Michaels with just a microphone at his desk, as you can see. <laughs> he, built into a, he built it into a six-figure business around the podcast within his first year. That's unbelievable, Abel. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. This is going to be fun. So we get a lot of comments from people who they have tons of ideas, they don't know where to start, or they have a current product or service, and they're trying to get traction with their sales. And you are the perfect person to talk about going from that idea to making your first sale or dollar online and beyond. And in your case, creating the Fat Burning Man podcast and building it into six figures within a year. Um, and I always like to include, before we get started with the meat, which you're going to share with us, um, a fun fact. And fun fact about Abel is... Now, he's a singer-songwriter who toured around Europe and had the hit song Ashley, and we got to talking. It's because there's a lot of girls named Ashley, so <laughs> that's the true marketer. So in that sense, that goes... It was by accident at first, but it turned out to work pretty well. So tell us about Fat Burning Man. How'd you come up with the idea? Yeah, so <clears throat> basically, I was in my early 20s. I'd always been really interested in health, but my health was was going downhill and fast. Every time I went to the doctor, um, you know, I had my blood pressure was higher. I had an underactive thyroid. My body temperature wouldn't get above 96 degrees. My my doctor wasn't really helping with that, but he was giving me on trying to get me on tons of different medications, and it was just a disaster. And I'm like, uh, clearly, what I'm doing, like my my healthy lifestyle, is not working. So. Uh, I did my best to, to fire my doctor and research myself um, to see how I could actually um, basically take my, my health into my own hands and take responsibility for the way that I feel, the way that I look and everything else. Uh, and, and once I did that, you know, I spent a few years going through medical journals and bodybuilding forums and everything in between, uh, every diet book I could get my hands on. It turns out it's not that difficult to be lean and healthy and strong and happy and all this other stuff. It's just a matter of following the right advice. And for me, it was so frustrating. Uh, I also worked as a strategy consultant in the food industry for, for a period of time. And uh, I realized there is so much misinformation that's, that's spat out at the public. Um, people are trying to be healthy, following the wrong advice and getting sick. So I took it upon myself to, I, I wrote a book that was about everything that I found that, that worked for me and what I understood to be the truth. Um, and then I had to figure out a way to, to get it out there to people, to disseminate it, um, to build an audience and a loyal following. And so started up a blog and then later a podcast and then it just, uh, it blew up. And I think one of the reasons for that is because it is just me with a microphone at my desk. There are no corporate sponsors. There's nothing else. It's just like me along for the journey. You know, I don't know everything. I don't claim to. The people I bring on are experts and they know a lot of stuff, but it's also like not dogmatic in any way. So we're all along for the journey, not corporate at all. It's just kind of everyone should be able to take their health into their own hands. So I try to help people do that. So what was the book called? Oh, well, originally it was called Fat Burning Man and it was just for men. But I realized over the course of time that more women actually bought it than men and more women listened to the show and read the blog than men. So that I kind of adjusted after that. Got it. So what was one thing early on when you were looking, because there's a lot of information out there, and yeah. what was one thing you found that helped um, kind of put you on that path to, to better health? There were quite a few things, but the biggest, the biggest change for me was coming back to the realization that, that real food and having life in the food that you're eating is exceedingly important. Like the, you know, my, my background I went to Dartmouth, studied brain science, and so I was very into the science and numbers and, and counting calories and counting macronutrients and things like that. Turns out science really doesn't know that much about nutrition. 
it's a very nascent field. Um, people claim to know a lot. It's just not true. And so it was coming to the realization that uh, it, it is more about eating real food, eating eating foods that were recently alive and well. It, it barely even matters which ones they are as long as you do that um, compared to what's supposed to be healthy, which is eating super low fat or super low cholesterol and counting all your calories, eating stuff out of boxes. It's going to make you fat and sick over time um, yeah. no matter how much you count. Yeah, that's a good rule to live by. Yeah. Now going from, I know you're going to talk about some of the successes of Fat Burning Man, but to start off, a lot of people are at that point where it feels nearly impossible. Do you remember one of those moments where it felt nearly oh, impossible to get one of those customers or sales? Over and over again. I mean, the, the whole process really, uh, for me, I've always been someone who's been a little bit cavalier in my attitude toward, toward doing whatever it is. But most people, when I first started this out, they were just like, well, you can't do that. You're a strategy consultant. What do you have to say about health? What do you know about health? You don't have your degree in nutrition. You're not a yeah. doctor. I'm just like, <laughs> precisely because I don't have those, uh, it, it gives me the power to say whatever I think is actually true instead of what the drug companies tell me to say or, or what special interests tell me to say. So um, at the beginning, it was being surrounded by a lot of people who said, you can't do that. Um, every step of the way from, from even starting you know, a blog or a podcast or whatever to selling books. So I, I did think that it was going to be very difficult, an uphill battle, but I was, uh, I was very persistent and I was dedicated to making it happen no matter how long it took. Yeah, and I mean, and it's probably people who mean well too and are looking yeah. out for you as well. But how do you get past that? Because in the early stages, it's hard enough to get started. And then you have people yeah. telling you, no, you can't do that. I think I looked back and uh, I love reading biographies and autobiographies and things like that, looking at great people from the past, you know, like Thomas Edison, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, and like just Benjamin Franklin. And I'm like, these are people who have done great things, big things that have changed the world. I'm not going to settle just for like being a consultant. <laughs> That's why, right? Like if, if you can do more, you have to do more. And so I, I felt like I don't even know what that more is. It was actually a, a quick background. I came home one night a few years ago when I first moved to Austin and my apartment building burned down. It was just a 30 foot wall of flames, Holy lost cow. everything. Um, and after that, you know, my life was an absolute disaster because all I had was like the, the boxers and the jeans and the shirt that I was wearing and everything else was, you know, rubble. So it was, it was very interesting after that. That's, that's when I really started focusing on building the life around me that I, that I wanted um, because everything else was kind of gone and it made me reevaluate like, well, is this really the path that I want? Do I want something cushy and safe and, and predictable and the American dream or do I actually want to build something? So I remember I went into like a therapist's office because I thought if there's if there's any time to you know go to a therapist it would be like right then so that was the first time I went and I kind of explained my situation I'm like I don't know what I want to do with my life but I want to do something great and she's like you know what Abel you're gonna be fine like, you can come back in if you want to but you don't really need to I can I can write you prescriptions for some drugs but you don't really need them just like keep doing what you're doing, you're going to be fine. And I was like, wow, <laughs> okay, I guess I have to do something. That's a professional opinion telling you. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so going from that, that early on where it feels nearly impossible and you're, you see everything go up in flames, literally, yeah, yeah. what's the story of how you got your first sale? Do you remember the, one of those moments? I don't remember exactly who it was because I didn't know who it was and that was important to me. You know, it was someone from like across the world who I'd never heard of. I'm like, what is this name? This is not my aunt's name. <laughs> you know, this is not like my friend from college. This is someone completely random who who found my website or whatever and decided that they would invest in in my book. And I, I just thought that that was so incredible. And then, you know, over the course of the next few weeks, like every once in a while, I, you know, I check my email and uh, my girlfriend, Allison, can attest to this. <laughs> I'd be like, I sold a book. And she'd be like, oh, my God. And we like break out champagne and be super excited because it's that it's it's so amazing you you created something and then it's getting out to people and like no one uh, I mean people definitely helped along the way but it wasn't like uh, it wasn't an organized process it wasn't something that you had to do it was something that like you just did and that's so cool how did those people hear about you how did you spread the word early on no one needs another like fitness and nutrition blog <laughs> so uh, I think I actually did make a few sales before I started up my my podcast, but 
it was just a matter of putting a lot of information out there and a few people found me through Google or Facebook or Twitter, I, I don't recall. And, and I didn't even have the analytics set up to know really where they came from, but I was just stoked that they found me. You were just using different channels on the internet, that kind of thing. You know, like as a consultant, I, I got into metrics a lot. I got into quantifying uh, all of these different systems and I've, I've taken a bit of a different approach because that's the perfectionist approach. That's like optimizing everything before you get it out there. Right. Um, but I decided I'd rather be prolific than perfect. I, I want to be able to get stuff out there. And so I started focusing on instead of like looking at all the metrics and all the numbers, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to create more content. I mean to do more work yeah. because maybe, you know, I won't be focusing on all these crazy internet marketing tactics that will shoot you to the top of, of, uh, you know, Google for two hours. <laughs> But I'm creating content that will be pretty much evergreen for hopefully decades. Right. Uh, so I focused on that, and I still do. Yeah. So what about the biggest turnaround sale, or where you find people definitely weren't buying but ended up anyways? Yeah. So <laughs> I, th I think it was probably the original branding of Fat Burning Man being just for men, which was very com comfortable for me because it's it's easier for me just like being a man to talk straight to a man be like you can eat steak and be healthy you know <laughs> but the fact that's remains, what they like to hear yeah <laughs> but um most men aren't that interested in health they're just they're just not um compared to women anyway they're the, women are much more interested in it um they tend to cook more uh they uh, are more responsible when it comes to exercising and just being healthy generally speaking for themselves and for their family so i kind of uh i, I took a bit of a different approach um not not in any specific way, but in the way that I spoke to, I guess, my avatar on the other end. Instead of it just being me or like some dude I know, um, it's about being inclusive of all the people who could be listening. Yeah. So I know that a lot of folks who listen to me are, you know, like 70 year old women. Um, I know some other people are, you know, 17 year old boys. <laughs> so I, I try to be as inclusive as I can and as yeah. true to myself as I can and not not pander, just just be true to it. So how do you speak differently once you realize it was women? Because it's not like a seven-year-old woman's listening, they're like, you need to get rock solid abs. They're not yeah. gonna relate to that. So how do you how do you speak differently to knowing that? You know, at the beginning, I, my whole thing, it's not about like getting abs anyway. It's not, it's not about fat loss even, it is about health. And you use that stuff as a hook to get people in there. And so they'll, they'll come in and they'll wanna have a great uh, body for swimsuit season or something like that. And so like, that's a great place to start. I'm not gonna knock anyone for having that goal. I think it's great. Right. But the, the true message is health. And the way, at least that I get someone a swimsuit body is by making them healthy first, and then the body comes second. So right. it's, it's more tailoring. At the beginning, I think I was trying to use that hook a bit too much. I was, I was trying to build an audience. Um, but that's not the best way to do it. The, the best way to build an audience is by being true to yourself and who you are and what you believe in. So that's something that I, I made that shift back then and I think that's what one of the biggest things that allowed it to kind of skyrocket up the charts and attracted a big audience down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think that's tough to do though because you know you know what someone wants but you're giving them what they need and you're trying to combine yeah. the two of them. You know, because they want to look in a bathing suit but you know, or six pack abs or whatever it is, but you yeah. know, you know, getting them to be healthier is what's going to get them there. Yeah, so, exactly. So it's it's a weird way of doing it, and I, I get a lot of flack from people for this. But like, if you look at my um, my iTunes thumbnail, it's like me with a shirt off, like on a mountain or whatever, <laughs> and you like do see my abs and muscles and stuff. Right, right. But um, the reason for that is because I hardly ever talk about that. I'm not. I'm I'm certainly not like the first guy to take his shirt off, but. It's a, it's a communication that this is possible by being healthy. So kind of that like that dichotomy between the message of being like, okay, like this guy's ripped and like he clearly knows what he's talking about. That's but actually what I thought of with the yeah. first time I saw him. I'm like, this guy's ripped. <laughs> but it's like, um, I'm not in the gym all the time. I do eat cheesecake. I, I enjoy my life. I indulge. And I, I try to lead by example by saying you can be healthy and happy uh, and, and have this too. Right. And in fact, that's the way that you should go about it. It shouldn't be this this miserable, no pain, no gain approach, which is just so pervasive throughout society. And, and it's unfortunate that it is. So I try to do my best just to put myself out there and be like, yeah. you know, as embarrassing as it is to have that be a part of my brand, brand I'm proud of 
being able to help people in whatever I can, right. whatever way I can. And I know that it definitely gets more eyes on, on the blog and on the podcast and stuff like that. So I'll suck it up and kind of like take my shirt off. Every yeah. I mean, so, it allows know, you to lead, shameless. right. It allows you to lead by example, you know, yeah. and without even saying a word. Right. And yeah. so that's what I try to do. I'd rather lead by example than have to like say to people like, Oh, well, I have a six pack and this is how you get a six pack. It's, like, <laughs> it's just silly. It's, uh, and it's not what I'm about. It's just not. So going from that, um, you realized, you know, women bought more. What's one of those pivotal sales or connections that you remember? Yeah. So this one was huge. Um, I spoke at paleo effects, which is a, a paleo conference. Uh, not this past year, which I, I spoke then too, but um, the year before, and that was the first time that I'd actually like gone to a, a conference on my own volition in the nutrition space. And I met up with uh, with a guy who's become a dear friend of mine, George Bryant, who runs Civilized Caveman Cooking. And at the time, he was a full time Marine, really wanted to do more um, blogging and and do like a recipe book and that sort of thing. And brilliant, brilliant guy, um, not a great writer at all, but a fantastic photographer and made some of the best recipes I had ever tried. And I'm like, well, I'm just kind of getting started with, with publishing my own stuff. Maybe we can, we can figure something out. Let's, let's do some little projects together. So we did like a free thing and then we did something on the Kindle. And then I decided to, you know, he was making like, I think it was two, two maybe $400 a month in, uh, in Google um, AdSense revenue at when, when we published. And uh, I'm like, we can do a lot better than that. I didn't know how much better we could do. Um, but in the first month, like I don't have a background in internet marketing or anything like that. I just kind of like set up a few things, set up a sales page and, um, with a little $27 ebook, we did $25,000 in the first month. Wow. And, uh, which is a lot more than $400, right? And then in the first six months we did like, I can't recall exactly what it is, but over 150, maybe over 200,000 and it's still going more and more. Wow. Um, and and so it was that, like now, let's skip ahead to now, which is actually just a few months later, really, I guess about a year later, he, uh, he's no longer a Marine. He really wanted to get out. Now he's focusing full time on his photography and making great food for people. And that is just like so amazing to have that sort of, you know, connection and, and share that that was part of his journey. And I, I kind of enabled that to happen just by being there and trying to help him out. And so we're, he's helped me so much. Um, along this journey as well. And so it's just like such a cool thing to be able to build that as opposed to just kind of the, the transactional relationships you typically get in, uh, in corporate America or just in like the traditional paths that most people take. So what was one thing that you found really worked? Because a lot of people you know, have good content or put things out there, but this seemed to really just blow it out of the water. Yeah, I think it's, it's by being exactly who we are. And that's tough for most people to do. So like my, my background made it so that I thought that everything needed to be triple copy edited. And uh, you know, you would have to use the perfect um, $100,000 words in every situation and stuff like that. What I found, especially like when I, when I met George, started hanging out with him, is like, he didn't copy edit at all. He it was like stream of consciousness. Like a lot of times he didn't even press the enter key. And it didn't matter because what he was saying, he was so passionate about it. Um, and that's what you don't get. You, you can go on CNN.com or eHow or whatever and get this vanilla, bland information. Or you can go and get a bit of spin um, from a person who you actually trust that, has, that instills personality in their message that, uh, that shows you that they believe in what they're saying. They're not just like giving you information. They, they're giving you truth. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are passionate. What did you do differently? Or how did you get the word out even mm. for people to, to find out about it? So with, with a podcast, I kind of, I surveyed the market and what I found in, in the podcast that existed at the time was that there were very science heavy ones that were kind of boring and not produced all that well. And my background, you know, is in music. So um, I know a bit about production of audio and, and video to some degree to a much lesser degree, but I figured I could, I could boost up the production quality um, and then I found other ones that were just like kind of, you know, cool people who are giggling and not really adding a whole lot of value to the person on the other end. They're just right. kind of like setting up a microphone and giggling and, and having a good time or whatever. But it's it's not really a show. And what I found, like especially being a, a touring musician, is that um, like I studied jazz in London. So technically I got really good. And 
you know, you could be shredding at a show and like no one would care except for the two dudes up front who like play guitar. But if you actually play something like you, you look at the audience, you see who's out there, you try to connect with them with, with a feeling that sums up either where they are right then or where they want to go, that's when you really connect with people. And that can be something a lot simpler. It can be something that reaches more people. And so I try to apply that to, to this. So it's kind of like a fireside chat. Um, it's an interview-based show, um, much like this one, where it's just two people who are passionate about a subject talking about it, but not going deep down the rabbit hole. So for the people who just want to dip their toes into the lifestyle, they're not completely intimidated. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the people who are seasoned veterans of, of eating and living this way um, are entertained by the personalities who are there. And, and they kind of get to hear the why behind people uh, why people put this information out there and why they do what they do, whether it's writing a best-selling book or, ha or having their own show or whatever. It's, it's, uh, so it, it's um, being conscious of that and trying to improve the, the quality of the show and the experience for the person on the other end as much as you possibly can. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, you just kind of survey the market, what's out there, and then deliver that message in an entertaining yeah. way but a meaningful way. Right. What's um talking about your close friend? What about what's a big milestone you're especially proud of that you've hit? <laughs> I think it was it was that point where I could take my eye off the ball and and realize that uh, like I, I have a team of employees now and we can basically pay the bills. Sales aren't going down just because I'm not looking at it anymore. So that's a very very powerful moment because it allows you to instead of focusing on the uh, I guess all of the, the metrics and the systems and all of the back end stuff, whether it's coding PHP or whatever, and I, at the beginning I did everything myself. It's focusing on the big projects that will help move this just like skyrocket everywhere. You know, whether it be podcasts or YouTube or getting on traditional media or getting on radio or doing more speaking engagements. Once you have that, that freedom to know that this is working, it allows you to focus on what you're really best at, focus on your strengths. Because it's interesting when you put out like, a show like this, I'm sure you can relate. 95% um, of what you do is not interviewing, right? Like right, the, yeah. what people actually see is the interview. Sure. They see the people on the other end. They assume that that's how you spend your time. But like 95% of your time is spent doing all the other stuff that you need to do right. to make that interview happen. Yeah. So what are you most excited about now that you can take your eye off the ball and pick, you know, go big picture? What, yeah. what excites you the most? It's being, number one is being balanced. I'm focusing on, um, I'm just, I'm kicking the crap out of my bucket list this year, which is awesome. Okay. Because like, now I have this business, so um, I'm, you know, going to Thailand with my girlfriend and a bunch of friends. I'm doing Krav Maga. I've always wanted to be, you know, uh, into self-defense. I did karate as a little kid, but um, this is kind of like more intense, so I'm learning how to do that. Um, I'm focusing on writing more books, creating more music. Um, and, and sleeping at night <laughs> and getting into meditation and just getting to know myself a bit better, building a great group of friends here in Austin. Um, like we're doing a party at least once a month with just all of these different people. It's, it's not like a networking thing. It's just like a bunch of people who I think are really cool and doing good things for the world coming over and having a good time at my yeah. place and introducing them to each other. So it's really, it's a bit all over the place, but I think it has to be because that's what balance is. Sure. Now it seems like you know, Abel, everything you touch is turning to gold. Tell us one of the <laughs> pitfalls or failures you've had. Oh, boy. Well, I've, I've had many. I think the, the biggest pitfall that I had over the course of time was being funneled into a system that is boring, that leads to a very boring life. So my example of that is so I um, graduated high school in three years, graduated college in three years, went to Dartmouth, and... Um, oh had a bunch of loans because I paid my own way and so the, the easiest way to pay them off was to get like a high paying corporate job so I took one in consulting and did moonlighting doing web design and stuff like that um, and played gigs as well and then I worked in consulting for a while and then I basically achieved the American dream with like a house um, where I wanted to live uh, a fast car and just like all the other stuff that you're supposed to have as an American and be happy and I got there and I was like Eh. wasn't satisfying <laughs> this is this is it really um, and then like I could basically keep my cushy consulting job where I wasn't working that much and making good money um, but but be bored to tears for the rest of my life 
<laughs> and so Sounds I'm like, exciting. yeah, and, and that's like, ugh, really? Is, is this, is this me? Is this all I have? Is this all I have to contribute? So it was that, I think it was sticking with that mindset for, for a little bit too long. And I don't have any regrets about the way that things went because it definitely informs what I do now. And I have a lot of skills that I built along the way. Um, and it allowed me to, you know, like tour as a musician because I wasn't working that much as a consultant. But at the same time, it's just like if I had advice for other people, like I, I've, I've talked to a few people who are graduating um, from the U University of Texas. And I'm like, if, if I were just graduating right now, I would want to know that doing your own thing is, is exactly what you should be doing. You can do it. And it's uh, no one ever told me how how straightforward and easy it was to basically like take your your passion which gives you this immense energy to to create great work and follow it and turn it into a business like if you want to be free if you want to be happy if you want to do exactly what you want to do and create your own job you have to create your own job you need to start either like a, a your own sort of employment for yourself or start a small business so i would encourage everyone out there if you think you you can handle it to do that because being risk averse like if you make the safe decision every time you'll wind up as the average American and that's a pretty sad state of affairs these days. How'd you get over that hump though? Because a lot of people may be watching they're like, I yeah. feel exactly the same way you did yeah. and it's comfortable, it pays the bills, you know, they're, they're accustomed to that. How did you yeah. make that, that leap? It was hard. So I was at the point where with the, when the podcast took off, like I was making six figures from my consulting job. I was working like 10 hours a week or whatever. And I had this, you know, huge following and I don't do advertising. I didn't really push my book at all. Um, I didn't have like, you know, a back end funnel or anything like that. Cause I, I didn't really know about, um, uh, internet marketing tactics or anything like that. I didn't even know that you could have a business that made that much money like online. Um, I saw a lot of scammers do it. And I thought that, that was uncomfortable. Um, but once, I think I just, it was about halfway into the process. It was, it was about, geez, six, eight months ago, maybe a little longer than that now, but I had had the podcast for about six months and I'm like, okay, I need to make this shift because I started getting these emails from people being like, you have changed my life. You, I, I lost 60 pounds. My aunt, you know, my, <laughs> my aunt's cancer is in remission because she changed her diet from eating all of this crap food and taking all this medication to you know nourishing her body and just like all these emails started coming in and I'm like at the same time I'm responding to these consulting emails which is <laughs> like just a rat race corporate nonsense you know and I'm like I cannot do this anymore so I need to make this responsible shift into mon monetizing my audience in whatever way I can so I, I did it I tried it and I made some mistakes along the way, absolutely. The one thing, we'll probably get to this a little bit later, but like the one thing that you need to keep while you're doing this is, is your integrity, your trust. Um, and so you can make some mistakes, but you need to take responsibility for them when you make them. So I, I, I've tried to do that along the way, but it's, you know, there's no secret. You just have to suck it up and do it, yeah. really. <laughs> so talk about that, the integrity. Yeah. So what I've found, especially in, in my niche or at least my like fitness niche because it's funny because my niche is kind of business but it's also uh, in nutrition and fitness is you find a lot of people who sell fats they sell things that don't work but they sell them because they know that they'll sell so like dr oz promotes something uh, or has something on his show and like 90 percent of that stuff doesn't work at all and the other 10 percent might work a little bit <laughs> but like most people know that they're selling horse manure um and they're okay with that and so basically they have these huge followings, these lists of, you know, 500,000, 800,000 people. And they basically just like spam them constantly. And that's their business. And they make millions of dollars. Some of those people, you know, when they saw that, you know, I'm getting big or that I am big, they want to do like list swaps and they want to, you know, basically uh, I'm, I'm fresh blood, right? And, and uh, I'm something new to sell. I'm something new that, uh, you know, I have a very trusted audience that, that I could bring them into. And so um, there were a few cases where, you know, I, I trusted the people and, and what they stood for and their products and that sort of thing. And I, I probably shouldn't have. And so, you know, there was there was one um, mailing people sent out. Let's see. It's interesting because I want to like my goal is to grow as much as possible and affect people in a positive way as much right. as possible. So when someone who has a list of 330,000 people is just like, I want to mail for you and, and say that you're a great guy and, and 
tell my audience why they should buy your product. It's like, well, yeah. And they're just like, well, would you mind mailing for us at the same time? It's like, sure, you know, like I'll, I'll do that. So one of the things that I did, this was uh, a couple of months ago, I mailed for, I, I have a bunch of different lists, but I mailed one of my leads lists, which is about 9,000 people. Um, and uh, that was for, for their product okay. to share them with my audience. They have a list of 330,000 people. When you calculate the open rates of the email, mine's very high, theirs is very low, and the click-through rates from the email, my list of 9,000 people had 50% of the click-throughs that their list of 330,000 people got. Wow. Um, just shocking to me. You know, like I knew that, it, that I had a passionate audience um, and I knew that, that a lot of these people kind of like spam their lists or whatever, but I did not realize the power or the lack of power that they have and, and the power that I have. So I, you know, after I sent that, I'm like, this is the deal. They're going to try to sell you something. Um, my approach doesn't work for any, for everyone. Um, so if you're open to other things, then I encourage you to check it out, but they're definitely going to sell you things. Um, and after I sent that out, I want it to be as transparent as possible right. throughout that whole process. You want to just keep the trust that you've had the whole time. Exactly. Them, yeah. But then I got a few emails from people and, and a lot of people bought it. But the refund rate was way higher than mine. Like mine's, mine's very low, especially in internet marketing. I, I, I take a lot of pride in that. Um, and I always want that to be the case. Theirs is very high. Um, people emailed me. They're just like, what is this garbage? Like I had, I had seen their, their main product, but I didn't see all their upsells and I didn't see their back end, um, you know, autoresponder sequence and all that other stuff that they're just like slamming these people 17 emails a day. And they're like, Abel, I'm so disappointed. And so I, I took so much uh, responsibility for that because I, I wanted to at least try it to see if, you know, reaching 330,000 people, that's, that's a lot of people and I want to help people, but that is not the way to do it. Yeah. Um, and so learning that was very important because it, it taught me that I'm not one of them, you know, I'm, I'm not going to play the game. I'm going to do what is best for the people who follow me and always have integrity with the way that I do it. And that is more important than any number or, or any number of people who you reach even. I would much rather have like a very small audience who's passionate, who's actually doing it and believing it than just a bunch of people who are like, well, I kind of trust this guy. Yeah. Lesson <laughs> that's learned, most right? Have, unfortunately. Yeah. Lesson learned. Absolutely. What's a question I haven't asked so far that would be important to talk about? Yeah. It would be like, what, what is the main best piece of advice that I could give to someone right now? And that would be that you create your situation, you create your life. Um, intellectually, I feel like I understood that for a long time, but I didn't start living it until about a year or two ago. And then everything changed in, in immense ways. You know, my business blew up. I'm doing what I love. I'm eating great food. My friends got better. It's like you, you choose, you have a hundred percent free agency in every decision that you make. And, uh, from your, from your environment to your job, to the people you surround yourself with, if you want to be happier, make all of that happier. You can do it. There's no reason that you need to be tied into the stupid American dream, <laughs> you know, that, that requires you to take on debt and forces you into a boring job that, that bores you to tears. Right. Uh, you, you, can, you can change that and you should. I mean, saying is one thing and doing it's another and you seem yeah. to be able to influence people to do it. What yeah. do you, in your writing or the way you talk, you know, these people making major life changes where they've eaten junk food for 20 years, yeah. what's one thing that you do to help influence that change? I think part people. of it is, is leading by example. Pretty much any time I, I give people advice about what to do or about what I do, I'm just like, here's a picture of me when I was fat and sick. Right. Like, that did not work for me. This is what everyone else is telling you to do. This is what your doctor is telling you to do. This is what most diet books and commercials tell you to do. Don't do that. Like, try this. Like, you don't even have to, like, keep trying this. Just give it a shot. And so I think that that's a piece of it, just being, like, transparent. I try to, it's very, for a per perfectionist like me, it's very difficult to put yourself out there and, and wear your imperfections like, like a badge. Um, but I try to do that as much as I can. Yeah. So, you know, with, sh sure, I have shirtless pictures of me being ripped and muscular. I also have a great many pictures of me being fat and sick and puffy-faced and looking right. terrible for no reason, you know, in my early 20s, like that is unacceptable. And I wanna show other people that they don't have to settle for that either. Right. So what are some of the, you talked about some of the systems, what are some systems you use 
for your business that are uh, important? It's, it's really, for me, I don't like sales that much. Um, I've learned quite a bit about it, but it's not something that I, I'm not a salesy person. I don't enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, it's like marketing and sales is, is the most important thing for every small business just to get yourself out there and make sure that you have revenue coming in so you can pay your employees and grow and build better products. So the way that I do that is I've, I've set up, basically I only have to sell once. So I'll make a sales video or I'll make a sales page or something like that. And then based my, my whole site, all the, all the content that I produce, my email list, um, it goes into these different products and it introduces people to these products. So, you know, I just did a, a, a blog post about how last week my girlfriend uh, went outside and the camera was out and she just like started taking pictures. She's like, you need some more exercise shots? I'm like, absolutely. So we turned it into like this totally impromptu photo shoot. And like within that post, it's like, you, well, you can be happy and you can eat well and you don't have to like train as a bodybuilder to, to do any of this stuff. And then at the end of the post, it's like you can sign up for my list or you can, um, if you want to know the specifics of of the way that I eat, the way that I train, then check out my book. And so, like every time that that I write it, I have no problem saying that. I do have a problem just like shoving sales down people's throats all the day. So um, I think it's that it's it's setting up those systems where your your systems are selling instead of you. You only have to, you only have to sell once. You only have to do a, a sales video or a sales page, and then the rest kind of just like happens. Yeah. So I have one last question for you. I'm not sure you'll be able to answer. You will answer it, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but just tell us a little bit more about Fat Burning Man. What's exciting, exciting for you right now with it? I think I realized that my blog is even bigger than my podcast in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and that was so cool to me because even if the podcast blows up like and, and disappears forever, it's like I have these other ways to reach people and influence people like I that same post that I was telling you about um, I, I just posted it like at 5 p.m. last night and by this morning it had over a hundred um, Facebook likes and which means it's been shared around by a bunch of different people and I'm, I'm like wow that is so cool because I don't you know for me writing an email or talking into a, a microphone isn't any different if I'm doing it for two people or if I'm doing it for two million so uh, it's it's super exciting to see that it's working and people like it's it's all word of mouth. I don't have any paid advertising. I don't have any you know like corporate relationships that um, that put me in front of more people. It's just like totally organic. So that's it's it's really exciting to see that momentum um, building, and I'm gonna do everything that I can to to keep it building. So what's the uh, website so people can check it out? Uh, that's fatburningman.com. And then uh, if, if you are interested in any of my music or all other books or projects that I'm working on, it's ablejames.com. Okay. And then so which post is one of your favorites on Fat Burning Man so they make sure to check it out? Yeah. The, the favorite one is probably a lot of people like how to get fit by exercising less. And so I, I did a case study of when I was running marathons compared to when I was not running marathons and just doing sprints. So running mm -hmm. 50 miles a week compared to like five miles a week. And... Uh, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but <laughs> it, the results are not exactly what you were what you, you would expect. expect. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would check that one out. Yeah. So my last question, which you know you don't have to answer if you don't want, or you don't have to do it, but um, this whole time I'm wondering what the song Ashley sounds like, <laughs> and I wanted you to sing a verse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm putting you know. on the spot. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that right now. No. <laughs> I'm bashful. I'm going to start blushing. <laughs> That's fine. I was going to ask you ahead of time. I'm like, you know, I'll just. It's so funny. It's so old now. It's like, uh, it's, it's so funny because it's a completely different style than, than I'm used to now. But I mean, uh, people will love it. Yeah, I, I've been wondering so this fun. whole time what it sounds like. <laughs> Well, if people do want to hear what I sound like, ablejames.com goes straight to my YouTube page, so you can you can check it out there. Okay, fine. I want to push a little bit on this. Like, is there a song you would sing? Is there a, a verse you would sing, or just in general? I caught oh, you gosh. off guard here. Probably not today, because my tip jar isn't in front of me. <laughs> I'll send you a PayPal. <laughs> All right, Abel. Another time. I appreciate your time. You know, everyone should check out fatburningman.com, and it's always a pleasure, Abel. Thanks so much. Jeremy, this is awesome. Thank you so much, man. Just
Thing for me since love. 